What's up YouTube? Uh, today I'm gonna show you how I sprayed these F-250 brake calipers in Illusion Cherry. I sprayed them completely with the RC1. It's a two, it's a two stage powder. It requires a, uh, the base coat, which is the color, and uh, clear on top is what brings the color out if you're not familiar with the Illusion series. Um, if you do powder coat, you know that two stages can be a little bit of a challenge, but the RC1 handled these no problem. Um, there's no light spots on here whatsoever. Uh, they turned out great. If I didn't tell you I sprayed these with the RC1, you'd never know. Um, you wouldn't be able to tell if I sprayed it with my Gima or the RC1. Um, they turned out perfect. I have no complaints with these. This is a paid job. Uh, the customer's not gonna be able to tell. I can't tell. So stay tuned to this video. I'm gonna show you how I disassembled them, prepped them, sprayed them, and then reassembled them back to this so if you got any questions feel free to comment um if you like the video like it subscribe and uh thanks for watching okay so these are brand new out of the box uh customer brought them to me just like this in the box they still have the brackets on them and they're fully assembled so first thing we're going to do is get them taken apart fully stripped i'm going to show you how to do that uh some things you might want to have are some picks you don't necessarily need this, this is to remove the pistons. Um, I had a job recently that it had two pistons on each side of a single piece caliper and it was real tight in there so these helped out a lot. Uh, you can find these on Amazon for like 50 bucks. I will attach a link in the description. Uh, and then you'll want some wrenches, sockets, or uh, whatever you got. But um, we'll go ahead and start taking these apart so you can kind of see the process of how that's done. Alright, so once you get the bracket bolts off, you can separate the bracket and you'll pull these pins out and pull this little dust boot off. Be careful not to tear that. It's really not easy to tear, but you don't want to tear that. Um, and these are covered in grease, so that means these are full of grease. So you'll want to degrease that or, um, you know, when you put in the rim strip, it should degrease itself. But these whole things are, uh, they're covered in a little bit of some kind of coating. So we need to get these degreased and then we'll get them in the rim strip. Um, I'll probably just stick them in the rim strip and that'll take care of it all. So now we're gonna take care of this little bleeder here. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull these pistons out. Uh, that's where this tool comes in handy. So you just stick it in here, you get it adjusted right. Uh, they're kind of like vice grips, but they work opposite. And you'll get them set to where it's snug in there. And you can spin the piston a little bit and you can kind of work it out. You get them a little bit tighter. You can do that and you can kind of pull it a little bit. These might have to be pushed out with a little bit of air first. But. There you go. Make sure you don't tear this boot on here. Just 
just kind of slide that back with a pick, being real careful not to tear the rubber. So then you continue to work this out, still on there a little bit. There you go. That's one piston removed. We'll go ahead and work on getting that other one out. So once you get those out, there's another uh, O-ring in here. You wanna take your pick and get down in there and just pull that out real easy, just like that. There's one also on this piston. And so now, you wanna inspect, make sure you got everything out. <clears throat> uh, we'll just take this little plastic cap out where this bleeder goes. And now this one's ready to go in the rim strip and then we'll outgas it and we'll get it prepared for coating. So we're gonna go ahead and take this one apart. Probably just gonna time lapse it real quick since you already seen how it was done. Okay, so now we got everything disassembled. Uh, that last piston was, it was stuck in there pretty good, uh, but we got it out. So now it's time to get these in the rim strip, get this uh, paint coating off of here, and we'll go on the rest of the prep. So we're gonna go ahead and get these put in the rim strip. Um, <clears throat> my rim strip has seen its better days. Uh, I have more, it's actually sitting right over there. I got a 55 gallon drum of it. Uh, I just need to clean this one out before I add it to it. So whenever I get around to that, I will put this, I'll put it all fresh in here and um, be a little bit more potent, but we're gonna work with this for now. Uh, I've been crazy busy around here, but it's gonna work just fine. Might take a little bit longer, but that's all right. I'm not in a super big hurry. So we'll check on these in about 15 minutes or so and see where they're at. All right, so it's been 15 minutes. We're gonna go ahead and get these checked out. They look like they're pretty clean. All that looks like it's loose. Get them shaken off a little bit and then we're gonna get them in the neutralizing tank. This is what I use right here. Uh, it's 13 and a half pounds. I think it's around $10. So you can also get stuff from a full supply store, but I found that those are actually cheaper. So that's the route I go. And uh, another thing to keep in mind is if you're going with the rim strip that they are about eight weeks out right now. So if you need to get some, uh, you'll need to stay on top of that. I had to wait a long time for mine and that's why my tank is so low right now because I've just been having to work with what I got. Um, been making do, but so just keep that in mind if you're, if you're using rim strip. Okay, so the brake calipers and brackets have been neutralized, rinsed off, and I uh, let them out to sit and dry. Uh, they came pretty clean. There's a couple red spots here and there, just a little small stuff in the corners, which I'll hit in the blaster. It won't be a big deal. Um, we're going to go ahead and get these in the oven and get them out gas. And I'm probably going to out gas them around 440 degrees for about an hour and a half. Uh, that should be plenty for these, especially since they're brand new. So let's go ahead and get that done and we'll get them blasted and we'll start coating on them.
Okay, so we're gonna be shooting these in Illusion Cherry. Uh, we're gonna be using the RC1 with the hopper kit. Um, my KB set right at about 45, and my air pressure is set at about 30 on my regulator. Uh, I might adjust things periodically through the while I'm spraying. I'll try to note what I do, but uh, this is my starting point, so you can kind of base it off of that. First layer came out good. Uh, now we're gonna lay some bingo clear on top and we're gonna spray it about 25 kV and we're gonna start off with the same air pressure of about 30 psi. Uh, we'll see how that does. If we need to adjust it, we will along the way. So here's the calipers, uh, they just now cooled off. You can see they turned out really nice. Uh, if I wouldn't have told you that these were sprayed with the RC1 or showed you uh, them being sprayed with the RC1, you'd never be able to tell a difference. They turned out the same as if they'd come out with the Gima. Uh, no complaints at all. These turned out really well. We're gonna go ahead and get these assembled and uh, then the customer can come pick them up. Okay, so when you're putting these back together, uh, you're gonna wanna have some brake fluid and just pour it in the cap and then kind of dip your finger in it and you'll see me doing it. Just to lubricate the parts up a little bit. And then um, I like to use this brake parts lubricant uh, by Permatex. 
And I put this on the pins um, just to keep them from seizing up. Uh, so you'll see me do that too when we get those put in. But for now, we're gonna start with getting these seals and pistons back in. And definitely keep you a couple rags on standby. That way, if you get something on the part, you can wipe it off real quick. Those all seated. I'm gonna get something to press the other one in and then uh, we'll get started on the rest of that stuff. Okay, so we got the other one in now. Uh, it was a little tighter than the rest. It was tight taking it out too. And I also got the dust boots already set. Um, for those to get the dust boots in, the way I do it is I take my pick, which I have right here. I take the back side of it and you can kind of work it around on the inside. It's gonna be really hard to see in this video but kind of get in between the dust boot and then down where that groove is and just work it all the way around and you'll be able to get, you'll be able to set that dust boot in the groove. I'm sure there's an easier way, but I'm not a mechanic. I have powder coat, so this is just how I do it. You just want to be real careful not to cut that dust boot with the with the tip of this. Um, and then to get to the bottom, just take these and spin it around. And now you can get the other side. And now that one's set. So you could, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but see how this one's higher up than this one? This one's seated and now I'm gonna seat this one. All right, now that one's fully seated also. Uh, so what I like to do is just keep spare rag, spare shirt or something, and some spray wax and hit it real good. Uh, just to kind of clean it up real quick and put a layer on it, that, um, that brake fluid will start to damage the coating if you let it sit on there for too long. Um, so you just want to get it off as soon as possible. Uh, there's probably a better method for this too, but this is what I like to do, so. I guess if you were really worried about it or had a color that showed real easy signs of wear, um, you maybe could do this first as a little layer of protectant and then maybe keep some Dawn spray um, or degreaser or Simple Green or something and knock it off pretty quick. But that's going to be good enough for me. Uh, you can't even see it didn't damage the coating. Um, everything came back real shiny. So now we're going to get... Uh, these pins set and these brackets mounted back on. Uh, you'll just have to figure out the right orientation, how they go, and then they bolt back just the way they came apart. So this is where I was talking about this lube right here. Um, they sell different models, they're different uh, makeups and stuff. I think this one was a uh, more high heat or something. I don't remember exactly. Uh, the stuff does get kind of expensive, so you definitely don't want to waste it. <laughs> but just slide some of this on the pin. It doesn't need a bunch, you just want to get it coated. And I believe they sell it in smaller packets. Um, just one time use, but I knew I was gonna be using it more than once, so 
and then this little boot will slide over right here. Just like that. And then we'll go ahead and set the other one too, and then we'll get it mounted to the caliper. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put these little caps back in. Um, they're just little dust caps, keep the debris out. And then we're gonna put the bleeder back in. Okay, so we're gonna get these polished up and we'll look over them.